What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Logistical Styles coming at you with another video and today we are doing an unboxing and product review of a light that was sent to me from a company called Sheds. It's a company I haven't heard of before but um, they seem like they have a really good product. I went to their website, picked out a light and they sent it to me and it arrived pretty quickly actually so that's a good thing to begin with. Uh, good shipping. It came today so I'm going to unbox it and we can take a look and see what's all included and what type of light this is. Let's go ahead and open this up. So when you open it up right away you get your manual and usually when you get uh, products it's like a box within the box. This is just the only box. It came like this. There's no other box inside. It's just the pack the product itself so you got a, a user manual right here right on the top this looks like a dmx cable yeah nice looking dmx cable with the little blue tips on it uh and then the unit itself let's see if we can open it up it's packaged they're packaged very nicely it's got some sty styrofoam holding it in place this thing is a lot bigger than I expected it to be. And then there's some hardware in here, and some more cables. So let's pull this out here. There's two pieces of styrofoam that hold it into place. We'll put that away. What else? So we can get rid of this box. We got a power cable and mounting hardware. So, covered in a plastic bag. We'll take that out the bag. And this is the unit itself. Pretty impressive looking. This is a 100 watt LED spotlight. It's a moving headlight. Very basic information. There's a screen here with uh, five buttons that you can use to navigate, I guess, any kind of menus. Um, let's see, turn it around back. We've got, yeah, DMX in, DMX out. That's what this cable is for. It looks like it's maybe, how long is this cable? Okay, so this is like a three foot cable, three foot DMX cable. Um, then power. This is pretty cool. So uh, kind of gives you an idea of how professional grade this is. I mean, it's got professional grade connections. You got power, uh, power con connectors instead of just a IEC connector, which I appreciate because it locks into place. And in addition to that, it looks like you can daisy chain them. So you can uh, get a power con cable and just daisy chain them without having to run power to the wall for every single light fixture. So that seems like a pretty good feature right there. You got your power switch on off right there and it looks like a fuse holder right there. Uh, if we, oh, it's got some weight to it too. This is not a light device. Let's see, you got some connectors on the back, on the bottom here. This mounting bracket right here. Very interesting design. I'm not, I haven't seen anything like this before, but then I haven't used a moving head of this size before. So maybe the other brands do this as well, but it looks like you got these little thumb uh, tabs that you can use to turn. And this has a locking piece that goes in. And if you look in the bottom of the uh, device, there's a place for those to fit in. So it's interesting because my other smaller moving heads have a different, they have a bracket that looks like this, but it just mounts differently. So it looks like if you put that in there, it locks in. It snaps into place and it will hold the light to whatever you mount it to. So that's pretty dope. Now this thing does have some weight to it. Like I said, I'll go to the website and look up the specs or maybe even the manual might even tell me. But uh, let's take this mounting bracket off. This is cool actually because you don't need any tools to mount it. I mean, other than what you may mount it to the pole or whatever truss you're gonna put it on, but to actually mount the bracket 
to the base of the light, you don't need any tools. So I really like that. That's a very nice um, feature. Then you've got these handles right here. So you can carry it safely without worrying about possibly dropping it or grabbing the wrong piece that's kind of delicate and breaking it in transport. You have handles dedicated for transporting it around. So I really like that. But let's get into it. I'm gonna turn it on, plug it up, turn it on and see how it powers up. So give me a second to get some power hooked up and we'll get back into it. All right, so now I've got it mounted up to, or I've got it connected to power. I use the uh, supply PowerCon cable and let's go ahead and power it on. Let's see what the menu does and see how it uh, powers up. Usually like on my smaller moving headlights, it will raise up that way, do a spin around, calibrate, and then start going into some automatic mode. So that's kind of what I'm expecting this one to do. So let's hit that power switch and turn it on. Got light, ooh, nice screen. Better screen than I expected. Doing its little spin around. Guess it's kind of calibrating. There's a little fan noise. It's not really, really loud, but yes, there is a fan, in case you were wondering. So there's some Chinese writing on top. Yeah, the menu is in Chinese. So hopefully there is some kind of um, menu option I can go through to change the language, but right out the box, it is, um, it's all in Chinese. So hopefully we can find a way to um, translate that. But the menu is really, really uh, thin. It's just one sheet of paper folded in half. The menu, let's see, or the manual. It's written in English. As I go through and read, I'll see how well the English is, but right off the bat, it does not look like there is instructions to change the language or how to translate those characters. So uh, let me do a little bit of reading and see what we can figure out. I, I did some reading and actually did some fiddling around with the menu and I'm going to show you the first thing that you would probably need to know if you if you get this light and that is how to change the menu from Chinese. I'm assuming it's Chinese to uh, English. And this is probably something that you'll really need to know if you get this and you don't know how to read or understand English or Chinese. So what you do is you use the menu buttons to navigate around. You see, as I'm moving around, it's highlighting different blocks. So. I'm going to go back to this block right here, which is right above the DMX logo. And if you hit enter, then it changes to English. And as you can see now, you can read what these uh, menu options are. And let's go from the beginning. You have a set menu, menu. I think that's manual. SYS for system, advanced, then of course the language. This 180 allows you to flip the display in case you had it mounted upside down. I'll go back and hit that again, bring it back. And then there's a reset, which I guess will allow you to go back to factory settings. If we go into the set menu, we get the option to look at inverting the tilt and the pan, uh, your display, you can use your button to move up and down, go back, let's go into manual, more manual settings that you can set for like the rotation and the different effects. This light fixture is a wash effect, it has a gobo effect, and it has a prism effect. So you have different settings that you can go through to uh, fine tune and adjust. Then there is the system menu. The system menu shows more information about the actual device. You can set the date and the time. I'm not really sure why you would need a date and time set on a light fixture, but maybe that has to do with um, programming it, depending on maybe whatever protocol you use. I'm, it's DMX, so I'm not sure how 
that plays into it. But yeah, you can adjust. You can even check the temperature of the bulbs and all that stuff. Go back out. If you go into the advanced menu, you can add a password. So maybe you can even protect this and keep people from messing with it after you make your settings. Uh, over here you have your error light and then your DMX light. Those are your status display. And let's see if we flip it around so you can see. Well, no, it's plugged in right now, so I'm not going to flip it around. But I did show you the back. It just has uh, DMX in, DMX out, and power con in, power con out. So we'll hook this up to the uh, DMX controller and then we'll have some more fun with it. Okay, so as you see, I have it set up right now. I've got the spotlight going on this white uh, projector screen and I'm able to control uh, the movement and I'm able to control the colors as well just by using the different color wheels. Well, that's the pan, that's tilt. This one, number five, so I'll go through what I'm doing on channels. One, I have the shutter, which dims and brightens the uh, light. Uh, channel two is the strobe. So you can make it strobe fast, strobe slow. You can control all that. Uh, channel three, like I said, is the pan. Channel four is the tilt. Channel five isn't really do anything. Channel six changes the color wheel. And one thing about this using this controller and even also when I use the uh, software control, it's very, very fine adjustments. Like if I move it too quickly, I'll, I'm going through the colors way too fast. So I really need to uh, take my time when I'm trying to program it. Um, and this is when you're using it as a spot. So this isn't a wash light, it's a spotlight, it's a gobo projector and a prism. So this is the spot, you can change the different colors of the spot, you can control the spot, move it where you need it to go. Then let's see what else we have. Channel five is not doing anything. Channel six was the color wheel, I believe I said, yeah. Channel seven brings up these gobos. Now I'm thinking channel five should have been like a, a focus but the focus may be on another page uh if i go to let's see switch here oh okay so this would be a uh, this would be channel 10. channel 10 pulled up these this is like a prism this is the prism because it takes one of the gobos and i guess it goes through a, a prism lens and that's how you get four or what is that? Six of the same design spinning around each other. Uh, let's see what else we can try. This channel, this one right here, this would be a eight, nine, ten. This would be eleven, and eleven seems to be doing some kind of a focus. But let's see if I can pause that. Yeah. So uh, channel eleven is what's focusing it bringing it in and out, giving you a little bit of crispiness. crispiness. And the way I had to do that was on the uh, Rockville controller, it only has eight sliders, but then you can switch to page two and you can get another set of eight sliders. So 16 channels, basically. This is a 14 channel light, so two of them probably won't do anything. Um, let's see, so yeah, that's how you focus it. This channel right here, channel 12, kind of moves it to the left and the right just a little bit, not a whole lot. The next channel does the same thing except it's doing up and down. So those are like micro pan and micro tilt. Uh, let's see what else we got. This channel does nothing. This one does nothing. And these last few do nothing. So, oh well, that kind of blacked it out actually. So what happened, it just, I, I moved this last channel, which would, I guess, be 16, and it caused the light to kind of reset to another position. A 
Okay, that brought it back. This last ladder is not really doing much of nothing. So I wonder if I go back into the other page, select. I still have my dimming. That was my strobe. And now I can move it around. And this is a 100 watt light. Uh, so it's really bright. I'm really impressed by it, especially for the price. The price online on the website, I believe this one right now is around $220. And this is pretty impressive. I mean, usually a light of this size costs a lot more. Like the other brands that are similar to this, you're looking at about seven, $800 and up. So this is a really good value. I really cannot complain at all. You got a lot of control. You can change your gobo patterns. If I go back into this other page, I can probably make them focus a little bit more. So you have a lot of different control that you can do with it. These are some of the designs that you can see from here. If I, let's see if we can go through and find some other designs. Those are the brick lights. Then you got these circles. We've seen that design already. More of the bricks. And you can make them just scroll through. And you can choose the different speeds that you want them to scroll through at. So I find that to be really uh, interesting and useful when you're trying to program a light show. So I will have to say that uh, I am impressed. I think this is a great value. Uh, it could definitely and will be used in my light show from now on. They sent me one to use and to test, and I think I may actually end up going and get a second one because if it looks this great with just one light, I think it'll look so much better when you have two of them in tandem DMXed up together. And one thing I will do, I'll probably go with wireless DMX because I'm trying to eliminate the number of cables I use but um, once I have another one of these lights I'll be able to test to see how well the wireless DMX works with them but I don't have any um, I don't think it's gonna give you any problems so hopefully this was a good review or an enlightening and entertaining review at least that kind of gives you a little bit of education about these lights um, like I said in the beginning sheds is a brand that I wasn't really familiar with, but when I started doing research, I seen that there were a lot of other videos from content creators like myself that uh, use these. And then when I go on social media and Facebook and search for that company name, I do see that it is being spoken about highly uh, in other DJ groups and other lighting groups. So I'm looking forward to seeing what else Sheds have. They have a lot of lighting and it, this is actually I believe the smallest light on their web page. The other lights that go up in price, they're actually a lot bigger. So they don't just do DJ lighting, they do high production lights. They've got some really impressive uh, pictures and videos on their website. So make sure you go out and check them out. We'll put the link to the uh, site in the description below. It's not my affiliate site or an affiliate link or anything like that. We're going to send you directly to them. And the great thing about it is they have distributors here in the U.S. and in several other countries. Even though it's a, a brand that's you know based out of China, they are able to get this to you quickly. When they first emailed me and told me they were sending it, it came and arrived at my house probably in a matter of two to three days. I can't remember exactly, but it was a lot quicker than I expected it to get here. So that's another great thing about this company is that they do have the ability to get you the gear when you order it. You're not going to wait for a month to get your product. I really don't have anything bad to say about this light. I think it works really well. Um, it's similar to my other moving heads that I use, except it's bigger. It's got a brighter light and it has gobos and prisms and it can do a lot more than the little mini moving heads that I had that are, are, are just wash lights. This is a much more capable uh, lighting fixture. So with that said and done, hopefully you will tune in for more video reviews. I have some products coming up that I want to review as well. And um, thank you for watching. 
If you're not a subscriber, please think about subscribing, like, comment, let me know if you've actually encountered these lights before, if you've used them, and if you've had um, any questions about them. Until next time, it's your boy Logistical Styles, and I am out. Peace.